Good afternoon, my Re News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for March 16, 2024. And in the news this afternoon, ex cop attacked and shot dead by gunmen in St. Anne. A man said to be an ex policeman was shot and killed by unknown assailant in St. Anne on Friday. The deceased has been identified as a Ken youth Jason Dawkins, resident of the bamboo section of the parish. The ex-police was shot and killed in Salem, St. Anne. Reports are that at about 9.30 p.m., Dawkins was at an establishment when two men entered, pulled a firearm and opened fire, hitting the victim several times. The licensed firearm of the slain man was stolen by the criminals, police said in a report. The shooters then fled from the location. Dawkins was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Woman among two held with a stolen cow in Manchester. Less than a week after police vowed to ramp up operations targeting Prado Larsny, a 39 year old woman and a 43 year old man from the corporate area were held in Newport with a butchered cow believed to be stolen. Operations officer for Manchester, Deputy Superintendent Colin Johnson, said they were among three people in a Toyota Pro Box motor car when the vehicle was intercepted about 3.10 a.m. Thursday. One man ran from the car, leaving a female and a male in the car with a cow, which was cut into four pieces. The two persons held are from the Kingston 13 area. The female has a comfort hall address in Walderstown, Manchester, as also a Waltham Park Kingston 13 address. There is a male from the Kingston 13 area, Johnson said during his report to the Manchester Municipal Corporation on Thursday. The third suspect who escaped is being pursued with the police in possession of his information. The driver's license which fell from the person who ran from the vehicle indicates that this man is also from Kingston 13. The motor car is owned by someone from Kingston 8, said Johnson. This latest incident follows an operation just over one week ago by the Manchester police targeting people involved in Pradia larceny. We conducted a major operation in the parish of Manchester around the slaughterhouses, restaurants, supermarkets and other meat establishments. We did a sensitization with them in the company of our public health inspectors and also representatives from the Veterinary Services Division, said Johnson. What we are actually doing is straight to monitoring of our slaughterhouse. No animals should be butchered on the weekends or in the nights. We believe that some of the stolen meat is then mixed with the legal meat. We are trying to curtail that as best as possible, Johnson added, as he noted that seven people have been charged with Prada larceny offenses in Manchester since January. He said criminals from outside the parish continue to be of concern to the police. What we have observed since the start of this year, there are migrant criminals in the parish of Manchester. These two people held on Thursday and the three held earlier this year bring the number to five. Two men were picked up on the Winston Jones Highway and were sent to Hanover, where they were charged for some sexual offenses. There was another person picked up in a road policing operation and sent to Trelawney. There are migrant criminals coming into Manchester, and so we pay particular attention to some areas that we believe they might be using coming into the parish, he said. Johnson told his audience that the police are monitoring south coast areas, including Alligator Pond. With the unrest in Haiti, we are on heightened alert as to our seaports, so we are placing particular attention to the south of Manchester, Alligator Pond area. We have also sensitized our citizens in that regard, he said. Farmer dies in fire at his farm in Pepper, St. Elizabeth. A man died in a fire on his farm in Pepper St. Elizabeth on Friday. He has been identified as 50-year-old Shane Farquharson, who was also a mason. It is reported that Mr. Farquharson was clearing his land with fire when he was overtaken by smoke. His body was found by another farmer this morning. Family of slain reggae girl brand a sentence unfair claim disrespect by court. The six years and the six months at hard labor sentence delivered on Friday to 24-year-old quality analyst Rochelle Foster, who was in January found guilty of the lesser charge of manslaughter for the 2019 stabbing death of national senior women's footballer Tarania Plum Plum Clark, hit differently for the record girl's grieving relatives, 
who missed the handing down of the ruling despite it being present on the court premises. Clark's family, in describing the sentence as unfair, said it in no way compensates for the grief they have lived with since the killing. My sister not a troublemaker. My sister is a peacemaker, and we are living in grief. This year I'm going to make five years my sister pass, and we are living in grief. This is not justice, a sibling of Clark's told the news on Friday, after Justice Leighton Pusey handed down the punishment in the Home Circuit Division of the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston. The family members who had been present for every moment of the 80-day trial said that their heartache was magnified by the fact that they missed the sentencing. It is unfair, it unfair bad. She get an unfair death and an unfair trial. We're here from 10 a.m. They said the sentencing will be at 2 p.m. So we went to have lunch and when we returned after 1 p.m., we heard the sentence pass on court down. One disappointed sibling shared. Clark's mother, Charmaine Riley Clark, a woman of few words, described the situation as a letdown. That is not fair and that is not right. I feel disrespected. It's really unfair to see she stabbed my daughter two times and they bring it down to manslaughter. And at the end of the day now we come, they mislead us and tell us it's 2 p.m. And after we come back, them turn off the light in the courthouse, she said, referring to the fact that while her family waited outside the facility, the sentence was handed down, the courtroom vacated, and the lights turned off. It is disrespectful and unfair, Riley Clark said. At the end of the day, it makes it look like no family member or relative turned up for the deceased, Clark's niece chimed in. When the news inquired about the change in time, the news was told that the trial judge had called the matter forward because the court reporter assigned to the courtroom for that day had a personal difficulty. The news further learned that the family members were not notified of the change because the prosecutor man in the matters slated for that courtroom on Friday was not the prosecutor who had led the evidence in the trial and who was familiar with the relatives. The news was told that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions would reach out to their grieved family members to explain. Clark, a rising star in the sporting arena, was stabbed to death during a reported dispute over a cellular phone with a foster about 8.50 p.m. on October 31, 2019, at a limelight plaza in Halfway Tree. During the trial, Foster had claimed that she acted in self-defense, insisting that she would have been the one to die if the footballer, who she said was fuming over the fact that she had called it quits on their toxic seven-month sexual relationship, had got hold of the weapon used to stab her. On Friday, Justice Busey, from a starting point of seven years, which he said was the normal range for such offenses, added two years for the aggravating factors of the killing, which included the fact that a foster was armed and the clerk was not, and that two wounds were inflicted on Clark. He, however, deducted a year from the resulting nine years for the mitigating factors, which included the fact that a foster had no previous convictions, was just 21 years old at the time of the killing, and had received a positive community report. Foster was also given a discount for the year and the six months already spent behind the bars. Attorney Courtney Rowe, who represented Foster, said his client was visibly dissatisfied with the sentence. He told the news that an appeal might be in the wings. I don't have any firm instructions right now, but she did express a desire of speaking with her family about going that route. We, the defense, are of the view that the judge did not properly explain to the jury when they came back requesting further guidance, Rowe said. On the day the trial went to the jury, after being instructed by the judge, they returned to the courtroom armed with the verdict. The foreman, when asked to relay the finding, said guilty of murder without intent, at which point Justice Pusey, in seeking to elicit what was meant by that utterance, gave further instructions and again sent the jury from the courtroom. When they returned, the foreman, when asked to indicate the decision, said the unanimous finding was that Foster was guilty of manslaughter. The guidance he gave was inadequate. We believe if he had given more complete instructions, then the finding of the jury would have been different. Falling on the utterance that the foreman made that they didn't find that Miss Foster had an intention to kill. We are seeing the judge did not assist them properly at that point when they were seeking clarification, the attorney said.